Okay, in this section, we're talking about some definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, in a previous session, we did define all these based off of the unit circle. We talked about that the, the y value is your sine and the x value is cosine. Well, now we're moving away from the unit circle. We're looking at triangles that do not fit or, or are not part of the unit circle. And so we have definitions that describe that. So in order to do these definitions, we first have to label the triangle accordingly. So first of all, the, the side that's the longest side of the triangle, that's opposite the right angle, that's always going to be labeled as your hypotenuse no matter what. Now for the opposite and adjacent, it depends on where, what angle you're actually looking at, where the angle is. So in this case, I have an angle drawn here. Your opposite is always going to be the side directly across the triangle or opposite from that angle we're looking at. So in this case, the opposite side would be given here. Uh, your adjacent side would be the other side than the one that's right next to the angle itself. Adjacent means right next to, and so that's how we know how to label that one. Now suppose instead of the theta being here, let's suppose our theta was up there instead. Now in that case, if, you, if we had the theta up here, the side opposite that angle would be this one. So this one would be the opposite and this one would be the adjacent. So these can actually switch depending on where your theta is. They rely on where the theta is and hypotenuse, no matter what, that's always the same. It will always be the side opposite the right angle. So with the triangle correctly labeled this way, we have these different definitions that we can come up with. Now what this means is that we can say that if, if I had an angle in here for theta and I put that in, whatever that sine of that angle would be, that would be equal to the ratio of these two sides, the opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, uh, we're just using theta as in the general case, but ideally what will happen is if I put an angle in here, I should get exactly the same fraction if I put that into a calculator. So my opposite side over hypotenuse, that's our definition for sine. Cosecant uh, is the reciprocal of sine, so that's why you notice that these two are Flip, we just have the uh, reciprocal there for cosecant. Uh, then we have cosine. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. This is its definition. Secant, again, is going to be the reciprocal, hypotenuse over adjacent. And then we have tangent. Tangent and cotangent, they, they do not involve the hypotenuse at all. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Again, these are reciprocal to each other. Now there's a word down here you might have seen possibly from high school uh, and it's Sokotoa. This is a, a word that you can use to remember these first three definitions. If we know what the first three definitions are, we can automatically get these because then we're just going to take the uh, reciprocal of that. So sine opposite over hypotenuse. We have cosine adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent opposite over adjacent. So this is a word that you can have written down that uh, allows you to be able to remember these. Now, of course, it's very important that you know how to spell the word correctly because, of course, if you don't, then you're not going to get the correct definition. So it's important that you have that written down correctly. Sokotoa is the word that you can use to remember that. So now that we've taken a look at all these definitions, we're now going to move on and look at a few examples working with these definitions. These questions are going to be asking us to find all six trig definitions based off of information that's provided with, with a triangle. So let's take a look at those now. Okay, we've already looked at the trig definitions, so now we're going to use those to answer this question here. We want to find all six uh, trig functions, so here's all the blanks provided there. They give us this triangle, so we're going to use this triangle in order to answer these questions. Now, because some of these definitions involve a hypotenuse, that means we have to know the third side of the triangle, so that way we have numbers for all three so we can fill that in by using the definition. So first thing we have to do is use our uh, Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. So in this case, our missing side is going to be, uh, well, this is going to be our C because this is the one that's opposite the right angle. That would also be our hypotenuse. So I'm going to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared over here, and the C is what we're uh, trying to find. That's our unknown. So I'm just going to leave that as C. The other two, 12 squared plus 5 squared. We get 144 plus 25. That's going to give us 169 when we add that together. Square root both sides. And we get uh, 13 is going to be our C. We do get plus or minus, but because we're talking about a triangle, we know that that's going to have to have a positive side. So 13 
is our missing side. I'll circle it to indicate that that's originally the side that we had the fine, the fine on here. It wasn't originally provided for us. Now that we have all three sides, we're ready to fill out these definitions. We're going to use our definition uh, for sine in order to answer the first question. So sine, referring back to the diagram we had uh, earlier, that's opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, we have to label what our sides are so we know what our opposite is. Well, here's our angle. The side opposite that angle is going to be what we're going to use here. So that this right here gets labeled as our opposite sides. So I'll label that. This side is going to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle and it's also the longest side of your triangle. Whatever one we haven't used yet, that's got to be our adjacent. So now we have all three sides that are properly labeled. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be 5 thirteenths. We know cosecant is going to be the reciprocal, so we're going to do 13 over 5. Next, cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse according to definition, 12 over 13. Take the reciprocal, 13 over 12 to find the secant. And then we're going to do tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 5 twelfths, and this will be 12 fifths. So for all these, again, these are always going to be your reciprocal. So once you know these definitions, automatically you're going to know these as well. So now that we've done this with uh, regular numbers, let's take a look at one that has a radical. Okay, for our next problem, we have it drawn a little bit differently than the way it was in the notes. And I wanted to have it drawn this way because I want to make sure that we have some practice finding out what the different sides are opposite adjacent hypotenuse. In this case, we don't know all three sides, so we have to find the the last side, so that way we can answer the rest of these questions here. We got to make sure we always have all three sides of the triangle given first, so we can answer these. We're going to use the same thing: a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, in this case, we have to be careful of what our c value is going to be. C is always opposite the right angle. In this case, the right angle is here, so the side opposite that that's uh, seven. So in this case, I want to put a 7 in for c squared. The c is always the longest side of the triangle. That's our hypotenuse. So we're going to put 7 in for that one. Uh, then, then I have 4 was the other side that was given. I just want to solve for the missing side. That'll give me the answer there. Uh, so I have a squared plus 16 equals 49. Subtract the 16 from both sides. And I get uh, a squared is equal to 33. Square root it. And again, I'm going to take the positive root only because I have a triangle here that has to have positive sides. Square root of 33 is what's going to go in right here. So now I have all three sides of my triangle complete, but I have to label what, what each of the three sides are so that way I get the definitions correct here. So it's always good to label what you have. Now here's my angle. The angle originally was given in this position. I want to look at the side opposite or across from that angle. So in this case, this side right here, this is going to be our opposite side, so I know my opposite is going to be square root of 33. We already said that this one down here was our hypotenuse because it's the longest side across from the right angle. And then the one we haven't used yet is the adjacent. So now we have the triangle labeled correctly. We're ready to use our definitions to answer these. Sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, it's going to be the square root of 33 over 7. Now I want to flip this because I want to get the cosecant is, is going to be the uh, reciprocal. And then it's always good practice to rationalize so your answer is going to be square 7 root 33 over 33. This will get you the answer. Most of the uh, homework grading systems will require you to have, have it rationalized. That's why we'll do that uh, as our finished answer. For cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. 4 sevenths. Nothing to rationalize there. We have a regular fraction, so if I flip it, I'll get secant. That's the reciprocal, 7 fourths. Then I'm going to do tangent. Tangent is the opposite over adjacent. So I have these labeled on my triangle, so square root of 33 over 4. That's going to be your tangent. If I flip it, 4 over square root of 33, and then once again, I want to rationalize this. So 4 radical 33 over 33 would be the rationalized answer. So now we have everything all complete. So again, now, 
it's usually best to rationalize your answers because usually the computer grading system online usually they'll require it to be written in that form.